Hey YouTubers, well, got another video for you tonight. So I wanted to show you my latest build. This one over here is my first build and I've been using it for the last four months and this here is my latest build. Uh, I just wanted to show you some similarities and the differences between the two and we'll go ahead and start right here at the very bottom. You can see right there that both of these are on the Franklin carts from Harbor Freight, or they do sell them on Amazon. I'll put a link down below in my description. These carts are able to pull out and expand. I can actually expand it out a little bit further and even get a third 200 amp hour battery on there if I wanted to. Now you can see that I've got a strap wrapped around the, uh, the cart holding them pulled back and holding them down so they can't slide off. And you can see right there it's strapped on each side. It's uh, made out of aluminum, so it's it's lightweight. It's got the four casters on there, so you can roll it around the house or throughout your garage or whatever. You can see uh, I've got the Lifetime 200 amp hour batteries, and this is the Plus model. And the reason I chose the Plus model in this version and the Redodo is because when you get the Plus model, you upgrade to the 200 amp BMS, and it's more of a more robust unit than just the 100 amp one. And then as far as the wiring goes for both, I stick with new concepts, Colossus wiring on both, both units, just simply because it's wiring that I trust. It's oxygen free copper wire. So, you know, it's less resistance. It doesn't create a lot of heat. And like some of those cheap wires, this stuff here is the real deal. It's the best wiring you can, money can buy. And it's really not that expensive. You know, because it's not like you're going to need a whole ton of this wiring for, you know, putting it on a board like this. You're really only going to need just a few feet of your positive and your negative cables. So, you know, a lot of people say, well, 12 volt wiring is really expensive and all that. But for wiring something up like this, it's really not. And, you know, to me, the wiring here is probably the most important thing because if your wiring goes gets uh, too hot and causes a lot of heat, that's where you can end up with a fire. So make sure that whenever you do a portable power station like this you keep your your fuse close to your batteries i try to stick with just as close as close as i possibly can within five or six inches and that way your fuse is to protect your wiring in case something wants to happen with the wiring your fuse is protected and so again if you're interested in that new concepts wiring it's linked down in the description and then as you see on both of these I'm running the Blue Sea Systems fuse holder, and I'm gonna go ahead and undo it, and I'm gonna show you why. All right, so the reason I use these is because let's say you're in your garage or something, and let's say you, you know, you keep all your your uh, flammable, well, you know, your gasoline and all that kind of stuff out there for your lawnmower, and you accidentally have knocked some over, and there's some residual fumes in there, and you do something even more stupid and you overload your inverter. I'm just saying, you know, it could happen, it could happen. And, you know, let's say you pop your fuse or whatever. Well, if you got all these harmful uh, vapors floating real close to the ground, you pop this fuse and you might start a fire. So with this uh, fuse holder here, it has a O-ring on the inside right in there. And then it's raised up right in there. So when you close this down, it actually makes a a, a seal and then once you close it up it's nice and tight and that is sealed away so you know if there is a spark it's not going to blow you blow you sky high and i know the chances of it happening are slim to none but it could happen and for just a few extra bucks this is just an all-around really nice fuse holder so i've been very very impressed with these you know and they're made where you can bend them or break them off if you want to. All right, now coming on up, like I said, I use the New Concepts wire, and then right here, you've got a Blue Sea Systems uh, disconnect switch. You know, I was in a Walmart here in the Chattanooga, North Georgia area, I've been in several Walmarts, and they've got these all on clearance for like, uh, some of the stores had them for like seven, I think, some of them had them for nine, some of them were 11. You know, I just got lucky, I found a bunch of these for, you know seven to nine bucks and i picked up like 15 of them so you know if you shop around you can find some deals here and there and then uh, this last weekend i was at another discount store and i found some of these uh sockets here these 12 volt sockets and they're marine grade got the little flap and 
they uh, have the inline fuses on them and these are actually some ones that are, are sold on Amazon and so I don't have this one wired up just yet but I I have uh, played around with it and it does work I'll put a link to those in the description and the the disconnect switch there in the description as well and then coming up here on the negative side you've got a new uh, product that I've been using the last few months is from a company called TBD Smart Shunt and what this is is pretty much just a Chinese copy of the Victron Smart Shunt that cost uh, the the Victron is about 130 bucks where this one here I think is runs around $75 and I gotta say the the thing is amazing it is pretty much just a, a copy like I said of the Smart Shunt and let's see, let me pull up the the app for it. And you can see right there that it, it looks just like the, the Smart Shunt app. And it tells you pretty much everything that you need to need to know. And you know, the Bluetooth feature on this one is far superior to the Victron Smart Shunt that's on this this first model that I paid 130 bucks for. So you know that was pretty disappointing to spend 130 bucks and the bluetooth feature on the victron wouldn't go 10 feet so that kind of aggravated me and so i started looking for alternative methods and i found these and so far i've been pretty impressed with them now working my way on up right in here you've got a 60 amp uh, resettable circuit breaker and i'm kind of picky when it comes to the circuit breakers and fuses and things like that uh, I, I always try to go with the Blue Sea Systems because I, I do trust their products. They make great stuff. Now it does cost more money, but um, you can uh, find good deals on it if you look online. Uh, sometimes they do run different specials and all that kind of stuff. And then you can see over here, I've got the reliable 3000 watt 12 volt power inverter. And I got to say, I've been very impressed with this inverter. My only complaint about it is, you know, just the uh, the fans are uh, pretty loud. Other than that, I gotta say, um, I'm really impressed with it. Everything has worked as it should. And now over to this side, uh, this is the uh, Rich Solar charge controller. This is a 60 amp, it's an MPPT charge controller and I gotta say I've been very impressed with it too. Um, now it was a big upgrade for me. I, I was using the Bujar V over there. Now that's a 40 amp charge controller. And the reason that I wanted a bigger charge controller was so I can bring in more solar power. You know, truthfully, you can never really have a big enough charge controller when you're running a 12 volt system just simply because you know, uh, you're always looking for more and more solar panels to get more, more and more wattage. So anyways, uh, but this 60 amp is, is working out fine for me. I think I can run, I think up to 800 or a thousand watts solar power, uh, with the 12 volts. You have to check their website. I can't remember just right off, but it has been a nice unit it doesn't even hardly even get warm all right so uh if you look here on the back of the charge controller you can see that that thing has gotten some really thick aluminum heat sink fins on it and it, like i said this thing hardly ever gets even warm when i mounted it i even added like a, a three quarter inch spacer right in there so that gives it a little bit more airflow so it's not right up against the wood and the same thing, I did the same thing here with the uh, power inverter. Now, if you look over here on the first portable power station that I built, I just, instead of using the little plastic spacers, I just used wood. And so if you don't want to spend the money on spacers, just, just use wood and raise it up. And that way, you know, you can get airflow um, back there and keep everything nice and cool. Now on the first one, I did cut a hole in the back and I did run some fans. Uh, you can see the hole right in there. And there is some computer type fans in the back from a company called AC Infinity. You know, if you're running it outside, then that would help keep it cool on a real hot day. But this one here, I figured I would just keep this one in the house. And, you know, if I did take it outside for some reason with those spacers back there, it would help give it some more airflow. But the fans on this thing are really strong. When, it's, when this thing kicks on, I can actually hear it across the hallway 
in the room on the other side of the far wall of the house. So the fans on this thing are, are pretty pretty loud. But the good thing about that is is you know that it's it's actually cooling and you can hear them kick on and off. So, you know, if you don't want an inverter with a loud fan, I would probably go with the, the Sandblast just simply because that it's quiet, it's variable speed, and it's not kicking on full speed like these do. So that's something to keep in mind. As far as this uh, power strip here, I uh, noticed that whenever you, you've got two plugs here on top and they're point, pointed this way, where on the Samlex, they're pointed the opposite direction. So I can plug in more stuff and not have to worry about cords where with this thing here, if you got a cord like this and it's at a 90 degree, comes out at a 90 degree angle, when you plug it in, you ain't got much room. Even with a big spacer mounted behind it, it gives you no room for a plug like that. So I thought, well, I'll just plug it in the top one and then I'll plug it into this um, uh, power strip. And this here is a like a hundred dollar power strip. I'm not gonna lie. I found this thing at an like an Amazon returns uh, bin store. I found it for like five dollars. And I had it for over a year. I kept it in the box. And I when I started this build, I was looking through some of my stuff and I found it. And I looked it up on Amazon and this thing is retails for like a hundred and something dollar, like a hundred dollars for this. Because um, it's like a really, really nice power strip. The receptacles and all are really nice. And it's like a hospital grade. And so, anyways, uh, that was nice to be able to have all these plug-ins. So if you do want to run, you know, a bunch of different stuff, then, then you can. You can, you know, plug in a TV, a VCR, and your Wi-Fi. And, you know, pretty soon you've got all these outlets filled up. You know, phone chargers and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I, I have to say that, you know, whenever you step up to a, a larger inverter, like this 3000 versus the 2000, keep in mind that your idle uh, consumption, your, your, your watts at idle are going to be a little bit higher usually with a bigger inverter. Now that's not all necessarily true because there might be a, an inverter out there that's really efficient, that, that's... Uh, very efficient at idle consumption. But let's see, this one here right now, it's running with nothing else plugged into it. It says right here on the, the smart shunt that it's using 23 watts. Now, let me switch over to the other smart shunt for that one. And it says for this unit right there, uh, it says that it's using 12 watts. So you can see right there, 12 watts versus the 24. So one other thing, uh, that I, I improved upon was on this first uh, power station uh, you see that I only use half inch plywood where on this one I upgraded to the three quarter inch plywood I happened to go into a Home Depot and somebody cut a piece of uh, plywood and it was to the wrong dimension and so they didn't want it a customer and so I was able to get this one at like 50 or 75 percent off and then you know sometimes if you search through their plywood and find a damaged piece go up there and ask them say hey this is damaged and they'll usually give you a discount on it i can't tell you how many times i've been in lowe's and home depot find a piece of wood ask them and you know they usually give you a pretty substantial discount so that's one way to save a little money i had some leftover paint uh, on both of these from painting the doors in my house so i painted the, the then just to make them look a little bit better you know, it, at least if I paint them white, they won't draw as much heat. So uh, who knows? But uh, either ways, I thought the white would show up nice on, on camera. So I painted them pretty much for you guys. But uh, as far as the half inch plywood, when I upgraded it, I'm glad I did because I took and made the plywood on this one here go all the way down behind the batteries where I stopped it up high on this one. And when I did that, it caused this one to lean just a little bit forward and that was fine it didn't really bother me uh, when I put that push that battery up there and tightened everything down it pushed it up just a little bit but it still has a little bit of a lean forward with this one by taking that three-quarter inch plywood all the way down pushing those two batteries up against it and then securing it it actually stands uh, nice and straight so it looks a little uh, nicer standing more 
more upright. Now, as far as securing it, I just secured the inverter, the charge controller, and everything with bolts. I didn't use screws. I just used bolts with uh, uh, nylock washers so they don't come loose or any of that. And, you know, you don't have a bunch of screw holes. You know, if you ever need to undo this, you can take it, take it loose. Right in here, to secure that piece of plywood to the, uh, the actual cart, I used, I can't remember if this was half inch or three quarter inch conduit straps. Um, it's just like a pipe clamp, I guess. I didn't mean to say straps, I meant like a clamp. But uh, you can find those in like your, uh, your electrical section at Home Depot or Lowe's and it fits that handle nicely. So, you know, I just ran that through there, run some bolts through the three quarter inch plywood and some nuts and, and it, this unit still rolls good. Doesn't have any, have any problems rolling around the house. It doesn't seem, seem hard to roll. And it, it does, the cart is rated for like 330 pounds. It won't have any problems holding these batteries. Uh, they don't weigh that much. And I plan on maybe eventually putting a third one out here. I'd love to have a, a, a third 200 amp hour battery. That way I'd fill the whole cart up. You can never have enough battery capacity. That's one thing that I will tell you in building these portable power stations. You know, if you've got room for three batteries in, on this cart, might as well use that, uh, that space because eventually you'll probably end up needing it down the road. So if I had to do it all over again, it was a great learning experience there with that first portable power station, but I would have loved to have a second battery like this one. You know, you, like I said, you can never, never have enough battery capacity, just like you can really never have enough solar panels. So it takes a lot, a lot more than what people think. So anyways, the inverters, they're both good inverters. The charge controllers are both good charge controllers. I've had no problems with either one of these systems. So I just wanted to show them off to you guys and maybe, you know, help somebody out, give you an idea, show you some things that I've done wrong with like the half inch plywood and the leaning versus some of the corrections that I've made to try to make it better. So if you guys are interested in the Reliable or the Samlex or any of these products here, you know, I've done some test videos, you know, showing, you know, the, the batteries running you know, these inverters and, and, and doing a load test and all that kind of stuff. So make sure you, you check out some of my other videos uh, because I, I do test all this stuff out. And, you know, make sure you like and subscribe to my channel and hit that notification button. So the next time I post a new video, you get a notification. It just pops up on your phone or your computer and says, hey, Matt's got a new video out. And um, just reminds you to, to watch it. Anyways, I appreciate you guys sticking around and watching this video. And, I hope this video helps somebody out and maybe motivate you to build one yourself. So in closing, I just want to let you know I am an Amazon affiliate. And so the stuff that I, I have here that I'm using is stuff that I've bought or had sent to me and to test or review and all this kind of stuff. And I uh, just wanted to let you know if you were interested in building your own, then you know check down below in the description and you'll see the exact products and I have links to it and you guys can build your own from scratch and do just like I did and you make your changes and build it however you want to. And so I just wanted to give you a parts list and share that with you. And like I said, we're an Amazon affiliate. So if you do buy from our links, we get like a very, very, very tiny percentage of commission. Now it doesn't cost you guys any more, you know, if you order it on Amazon uh, through my link or if you go to amazon.com and search it out yourself, uh, it doesn't cost you guys any more. Until next time, guys. See ya.